good lord almighty. Okay, so TikTok has been showcasing a ton of cooking life hacks, and I'm curious, are they real or are they fake? There's really only one way to find out, and that's by tasting them. Let's try it. I bet you guys are wondering, what in Betty White tarnation can you be making with Oreos and some cream cheese? I was wondering the exact same thing before I saw this cooking life hack. Roll the clip. Think about this cream cheese and Oreos. Does that even sound right at all, Jake? Sounds disgusting. It honestly sounds disgusting, but the face on that man said otherwise. So we're gonna try it here, okay? So first things first, we got some Oreos. We're gonna just do like a row of Oreos. We need these for another hack, so let's put them off to the side. Next things next is we have to absolutely destroy these. This thing is the most amazing thing I've ever purchased before. So now, once you have it completely destroyed, you're gonna pour them in a bowl. Wow, look at that. Now, the part that I just do not understand how this is gonna taste good at all with is the cream cheese. All right, next thing they did, they really just kind of meshed it all together, so. Oh. long but it really does get your forearm nice and strong so next thing we need to do is we need to melt the white chocolate mm. before this is completely done we need to start making this into some balls so that we can dip it in there before that cools down and gets hard again wash your hands first because you know what I don't want any comments saying that I'm disgusting yeah this is actually like it feels like cookie dough it's very soft though very soft <laughs> now we need to grab the ball they don't have to be pretty guys, you just have to get them all around because that's what's actually going to get hard is the chocolate. So once they're completely covered like this, we're going to want to put them in the freezer for about an hour. So we'll check back in an hour and see how these things look and taste. So they definitely look interesting. They give me this vibe of like cookie dough. So I almost like feel like we didn't even cook them. But then I remember they're just crushed up Oreos with cream cheese. Without any further ado, oh wow, they actually are like full on little balls. And That's you could make these kind of cool if you wanted to. Like you could make them a little hard. You could do whatever you want. Good. So here we go. Let's taste it. I'm a little worried about the cream cheese, but uh, here we go, you know? Oh my god. Oh my god. Where'd the cream cheese go? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's so good. It tastes like an Oreo McFlurry, but it's like an edible ball. Oh my god. Oh my god, yo. The texture and like the taste of it almost is like an ice cream. It almost tastes like an Oreo ice cream. It like transformed. I don't know, man. Without a doubt in my mind though, I'm gonna have to rate this one as a total success. This is the biggest hack to life. It's because more than a success, it's it, it, delicious. It's delicious, this is something that I would definitely make again, and it's just crazy to me, because if you were to tell someone that you put cream cheese in here, they'd think, ugh, that's disgusting. Oh my Major god. Major success, try this at home, absolutely delicious. This is the epitome of a life hack, a cooking life hack. All right, what the fudge is this? Are we making fudge? You know what? We might actually be making fudge. Let's roll the clip. Oh my god, snack hacking again. We're about to make some peanut butter fudge on this episode of Chunky Hustle 101. All right, Chunky gang, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a microwave-safe bowl, an 8x8 pan, some parchment paper, creamy peanut butter, unsalted butter, and a pack of that Colombian Bam Bam. All right, so step one, you're going to want to put one cup of peanut butter and eight ounces of butter into your bowl. All right, step two, take your bowl, set your microwave to 420, and hit start. Step three, while you're waiting on the microwave, go ahead and line your pan with a piece of parchment paper. Step four, stop your microwave at three minutes and 20 seconds so you can mix it up a little bit. Step five, you're going to want to stir it like you're whipping a brick. Step six, throw it back in for another minute. <coughs> Step seven, stop your microwave at 220, pull it out, and continue to water whip until it's nice and smooth. Step eight, pour in one pound of that booger sugar and mix it until it's smooth. Step nine, pour it into your pan. Step ten, take a second piece of paper and pack your fudge until it's real nice and tight. 
step 11, throw it in the fridge for two hours. Oh Lord, Chunky made another one. Is it as good as he made it seem like? I don't know, I've really never had fudge. So let's try it. We don't have a cup measure. <laughs> So now thanks to my neighbor, we do have a measuring cup and we are able to do this. So first things first is we need to fill this thing up with peanut butter. That means I'm gonna have to scrub this thing good before I return it. Wait, that's good? That's good. All right, don't. You what? need to use that to mix it later. Jeez. I love peanut butter. <laughs> as far as the microwave safe bowl, this is all we got. So we're gonna do it. Hopefully this is microwavable safe. I think so. I think so too, I guess we'll find out. Now we're gonna put eight ounces of butter. We wanna get all of this back into here, so. That's fine. That's more than enough. I think that's good. Now we're gonna wanna put this in the microwave for four minutes and 20 seconds. I don't know why he chose that number, but hey, I don't even know what that means. Okay, here we go. Start mixing it up a little bit. Oh, look at that. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Let it go for another minute. All right, now it's been two minutes and 20 seconds, so now we are gonna whip it up a little bit more. Oh, oh! We're literally gonna be testing this by our eyes. So this is actually two pounds, so we just pour half of this. Oh. That's a lot of sugar, man. I'm down. I'm down because it's for the video, it's but- for the culture. <laughs> we have to try it the way he did it, but that's, this is a, this is a lot of sugar to put half of that. Okay, whatever. Oh. I kinda wanna try it. So as we're putting it in, we should keep stirring it. Oh my God, this looks like, it's looks like a funnel cake. I don't think we should put a whole half a pound no, in no, no, That's just, way too much. Way Maybe too a little much. bit more and that's, oh shit. Oh my God. You don't have a whisker? Wow, oh, that's way easier. It like we gotta right. make it way like this. Okay, that's half the bag now. Okay, that's definitely yeah, half the bag. Yeah, yeah, so now yeah. we did it right. Let me just mix this together and then we're ready. The fact that I'm looking at this and just knowing that it's like pure sugar basically, because it was liquid state just a few seconds ago and all the sugar absorbed all the liquid, is what's worrying me the most. We're following his directions, you know? All right, here we go. Oh my God. Pound it down, flatten it down. This is where we're gonna get the shape. Now that we packed it super tight, we're gonna put this in the fridge for two hours. So we will check back in two hours and get ready to taste this thing. It's been two hours. I think it's time to see the fudge. Ooh, I'm down. Let's see it. Oh my God. Oh, that is like a brick. Look at this thing. Here we go. All right, Chunky. Let's see how good your uh, fudge is, shall we? Whoa, hmm, kind of tastes like a, a Reese's, Reese's cup. Yeah, it's really dense. Mm. But it's not as like hard as you think it was. You kind of put it in your mouth. It's like one of those Mexican caramel uh, vanilla candies that are in those little circles. I don't know what they're called, but you, but you put it in there, it kind of turns to powder. Mm. Wow, wow. I did not think fudge was like this. I never really had fudge. I thought it was Unless like we just added too much sugar, because it almost feels like I'm just eating that sugar. Yeah. You put it in your mouth and it kind of just dissolves to that powdery sugar. Yeah, it kind of like falls apart. Yeah, look at it. But maybe that's how you're supposed to be. I don't know. It's not bad though. It is good. I would not make this again. It's, it's just not whatever. Bad. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna honestly, I'm gonna have to say yes, it did work, but it's kind of busted in my yeah. opinion. I don't think it was as good as Chunky made it out to seem. Um, I'd rather have some like peanut butter ice cream or something. I'd rather just eat like a Reese's puff. Or Reese's nutter cup, butter. Or nutter butter. Honestly, this is it's a lot of peanut butter and it's a lot of sugar and it's kind of not worth it. It is what it is. On to the next one. This next one I have only ever seen at fairs. I've always been curious on how to make them yourself, and now, because of a life hack, we're gonna be able to. So let's roll this clip. So this one looks easy enough. All we gotta do is first gut these peppers. So I'm gonna cut one open. And we gotta get all that out. Let's cut to a time lapse of me gutting all these because we don't need to see this a hundred times. So now that we drained the main vein and we completely gutted all of these, what we need to do next is we need to stuff them with some cream cheese. So now that you've stuffed them all, we wanna add some shrimp to it. Just add a couple in each one just to give it a little bit of flavor, you know? Depending on how much shrimp you like. You can add more. The only thing to do left is to wrap it in bacon. Oh, that's gonna be good. Start on one side and bring it around town. Ooh, look at that, completely cover it, set it on the foil. 
and then repeat. So the TikTok didn't really tell us how long these should sit in the oven, so we're just gonna guesstimate it by um, looking at it, and when it looks done, it'll be done. 20 minutes later. All right, so this is what we made. Stuffed peppers wrapped in bacon. Now, taste test time. I think it's only right to just take a bite, man. This is gonna be a lot of cream cheese. Yeah, it might be hot cheese, too, so be careful. Mmm, mmm. What? <sighs> Look at some peppers left in there. That's actually pretty damn dank. And it only took like 20 minutes to make. It's super cheesy, so if that's what you like, this is just for you. I love the bacon most of all. I'm not a huge cheese guy, but honestly, this worked. It's actually delicious, and it's actually really easy to do. So hey, <laughs> good luck. Go make them. This is a success. <laughs> what are we doing with this, Jake? Are we trying to keep the vampires away? Yeah, and have a snack. And a snack? Yeah. You mean there's a life hack for this one? Of course. All right, let's watch it. How to make simple roasted garlic. Take a head of garlic, cut the top off. Put it on a piece of foil, salt, pepper, olive oil. Wrap it up, roast in the oven for 45 minutes at 400 degrees. Squeeze out the insides. Try spreading it on bread with a shaving and Parmesan. That's a good snack. Is it a good snack? I don't know. There's only one way to find out. Let's try this. So, we gotta cut the head off. I'm gonna cut a finger off is what I'm about to cut off. Some salt, some pepper, some olive oil. Fold it up. Put it in the oven for 40 minutes. Now we need to squeeze out the inside of this garlic, so. Oh, oh, it's hot. Ah, you definitely should wait until it's completely cooled down. We grab our garlic, spread it upon the bread. Parmesan cheese. Is this such a good snack? Not bad. I think if the bread was toasted, it would be a little bit better. All right, we're gonna improvise real quick because I feel like we can make this hack a little bit better with uh, my skill and knowledge of cooking. So now you toast your bread a little bit, throw it back on there, grab the garlic, spread the garlic. And we're honestly thinking, you know what? Let's add a little marinara because I want to bring the full Italian to this, so. Uh, let's do this. Mmm. Now we're talking. Mmm. But I'm gonna have to say, if you have 40 minutes just lying around and you want to make some garlic bread, this is definitely a success. But then again, it did take 40 minutes to make some garlic bread. Was it worth it? Maybe if you're making a bigger meal. I don't know about a snack. Depends on how much you like garlic. <laughs> this next one's called Sex in a Pan. And just by looking at the ingredients, I can only wonder why it's called Sex in a Pan. So let's watch the clip. All right, I'm going to show you how to make Sex in a Pan. But I don't know what sex is, so I'm a virgin. Start with the dough. Add the goods. Mix the goods. Put that shit in a, what's that thing called? Cast iron skillet. Add some Reese's, then add some Oreos. Cover it up with even more cookie dough because why not? Throw it in the oven. That's my friend Elise, so cute. Put it in for 375 for like 20 minutes till it's golden like that and oh my God, that's beautiful. Whew. Did you hear the heavy breathing after she described it? When she looked at that, she had to breathe out for a second and be like, oh, that's how good it was. And I love the niceness that she had to her friend. So honestly, let's try this out. So she actually made her own cookie dough. We didn't want to go that route, so we literally just bought our cookie dough because why go all out and take it when we can just buy it? The first bottom half, flatten it out, really spread it out so it can have, you gotta also know that when a cookie starts to get really hot, it's gonna spread out and you know, fill out the pan anyways. So and it rises. Keep that in mind. In, oh yeah, it does rise, so we don't want to make it too high. No, you want to keep it flat, flow. yeah. We're gonna spread some Reese's and some Oreos all over this thing. After you cover it all up, we're gonna put another layer on the top of this. I flattened it out on my clean table because I didn't want to squish all the Oreos and all the Reese's, although you are gonna to want to pack it down a little bit. Last but not least, we're gonna put it in the oven for 20 minutes and we're gonna wait until it gets golden brown and then, oh shoot, we're gonna enjoy. Here we go. So it's been 40 minutes since we put it in here. It was only supposed to be 20 minutes, but we've been checking it each 10 minute after and it hasn't been ready yet. So we're just gonna pull it out now before it starts to burn. So here is our, oh yes, it's getting actually brown brown. I guess the only thing we could do is dig in and just find out if it's ready by digging in. Oh my God. 
Oh wow, look at the insides, look at the insides. It's a little doughy still, honestly, it's a little doughy, but it's just, it's hard to cook something that is so deep like this. You gotta think, it's cookie, other cookies, more cookie. So it's kinda hard to cook. Um, I wonder if the Oreos are gonna be hard or not. Give they're it not, go. they're soft, it, look, look how it broke off. It's gonna be really hot though. This is what the inside looks like. It's still very doughy. I honestly don't even know if this is edible. I think if you honestly, if you were to just burn the top layer, like be fine with it being burnt, and then like letting it just really cook the insides, that'd be the only way that it would totally cook it. But enough with the BS, let's taste it. Here we go. Is it sex? I wouldn't say sex. I mean, it's good. It's it's definitely good, but it's like it's not what I thought it was gonna be. The way she made it and the way it looked when she when she grabbed it, it looks like sex. It really did. For me, this is a one night stand. It's not it's not great sex, but you know what? It happened, right? <laughs> but the more I eat it, the more I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, don't get me wrong though. It is still good because it's a cookie at the end of the day. It's just only bits and pieces of it are good. For example, come check this out. The top layer right here, this part, if I were to grab this part right here, delicious. Any deeper, I'm going into raw territory right there, baby. I don't know how delicious that is. The bottom part down here, delicious. It's cooked, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, you can look at this split layer right here. You can clearly see like this is all bad and then the bottom layer is amazing. Exactly, so there is bits and pieces of it that I do like, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna have to say that this is busted because it's not completely edible. If you sit there and eat this, you're gonna get sick because it's raw dough at the end of the day. Half of it is at least. So that's my thoughts on this. Kinda sucks though because I was looking forward to this thing. The whole video, <laughs> I saved it for last, you know? <laughs> God, I'm in a food coma. I hope you guys are enjoying these TikTok food hacks. If you are and you want to see more, smash the thumbs up button right now and make sure you hit the subscribe button. Click the little bell so you never miss any of my content. If you have some food hacks of your own that you want to send to me so that I can showcase in the next episode, text them to me. 323-405-9940. Until next time, I'm going to go take a little nap because I'm real full right now. See you guys later. Peace.